What's up, family? How's it going? I wanted to uh, make a video, encourage somebody today. Um, I have a word that's kind of been stirring in my heart for a few days. I shared it at uh, our prayer service, but I just really want to share it with somebody on here and I give somebody some some encouragement because, man, it's it's not uncommon. It's not unusual. It, but it's not. I'm not saying that's right, even though it's common and that it's not unusual that um, for people to have, to be struggling with the same sickness, the same disease, the same frustration, the same problem, the same addiction, it almost becomes like this cycle. And, you know, a lot of times we relate that cycle to a, um, a mountain that the children of the Israelites circled. The Bible says for many days, God said, you have circled this mountain for many days. And, um, and so sometimes people get in these cycles. Sometimes people get in these these things where they just circle around this mountain. But here's the thing. When you circle around something for many days and you're around something for a long time, you get familiar with it. And so it's easy to get familiar with the things that are trying to attach to our life. It's easy to get familiar with sickness and label it and think that you're never going to be free from this. You're never going to be free from this addiction. You're never going to be free from this. Maybe it's a reoccurring sickness is that mountain you keep surrounding. Maybe it's a reoccurring issue you're having financially. Whatever the issue may be, if that's you in your life, I want to give you an encouraging word. Don't get familiar with it because everything about the gospel is total freedom. Don't let anything else talk you out of that. Everything about the gospel is total freedom. The Bible says in Galatians, we have been called to liberty. He goes on to say, don't let liberty, don't use liberty as a cloak for vice. Other, you know, But he's saying we've been called to liberty in every area of our lives. We've been called into liberty in our spirit, soul, body, mind, our heart. Let your heart go free. Let your mind go free. And it's all done in the finished work of Jesus and knowing who we are in him in light of his resurrection. So, um, Whatever the mountain may be, I'm telling you, there's liberty for it. That's why the Jesus says, if you are my disciples, you'll abide in my word and you'll know the truth and that truth will set you free. And if the son sets you free, why? Because he is the truth. And if the son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. And so if you've been circling around the same issue for a long time, I, I want to give you some scripture because scripture is your rock. In your relationship to the word, your relationship to the Word of God is equal to your relationship with God. You can't say, well, I have a relationship with God, but then you don't have a close relationship with the Word. The two are one. The two are one. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is your face-to-face -face encounter with God. When you open up your Bible, this is the Lord. And so if you're trying to fight an issue outside of the Word of God, you're going to be on shifting sand. You're not going to have no ground to fight. And so every time you go to war, every time you're facing an issue, every time you're 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 in a in a battle, you have to find a scripture. You get in the word of God and let the word of God be your rock. And so I'm gonna give you some rock to stand on and um about overcoming some of these reoccurring issues. Amen. And so this is Deuteronomy chapter one, verse Deuteronomy chapter two, verses one through three. Sorry, it says then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spoke to me, and we skirted Mount Seir for many days. We skirted Mount Seir for many days. Verse 2 says, And the Lord spoke to me, saying, "The Lord." Now this is the Lord speaking. Moses was basically going over their journeys in the wilderness. Now the Lord in, interrupts, um, and this is what the Lord says. The Lord spoke to me, saying, You have skirted this mountain, listen to what he says, long enough. You've skirted this mountain long enough. Turn northward. And so there's got to be something inside of you through the word of God, through the word of God that says, I have skirted this mountain long enough. So let something get provoked inside of you and say, you know what? I'm not dealing with depression anymore. I'm not dealing with anxiety anymore. I'm not dealing with these issues anymore. I am turning my face from my issue to the Lord. That's what the Lord begins. To, the first thing he says to do is turn away from this thing and begin to turn your face to the truth. Begin to turn your face to the word. Begin to turn your face to the Lord. Begin to turn your face to fellowship and with the body of Christ and begin to to turn your face from that. See, some of you have skirted this mountain long enough. Some of you have skirted sickness long enough. That reoccurring sickness, it's been long enough. You've skirted depression long enough. This addiction has been skirted along its time. It's over. It's been long enough. And so turn away from that thing and turn to the Lord. And you do that by the word of God. Let me give you some more scripture. 
and and Jesus is so amazing. God, I love Jesus so much. He's so good. Listen to what Jesus says. This is Matthew chapter 21, verses 21 through 22. Let me give you some more rock to stand on. This is what Jesus says. Do you think Jesus said this by coincidence or by accident? No way. No way. No way. Listen to what he says. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but listen to what he says, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and it will be done. It will be done. And whatever things you ask with your mouth, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Amen. And so Jesus curses a fig tree. The disciples come back. They're like, oh my gosh, the fig tree's already withered. And this is Jesus's response. It's almost, it's almost as if he looks at him and says, you're impressed by the fig tree. Wait until you speak to the mountain. And see, that's where your belief changes by how you speak. You know what I can, if you talk to me for a certain period of time, I know what you believe by the words that you say, because the, the, the words of your mouth reveals the abundance of your heart. Paul says it like this. We believed, therefore we spoke. And so if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, what are you going to do? You're going to speak to the mountain. You're not going to say, well, you're not going to get familiar with it. See, that's what you do when you're with something for a long time. You get familiar with it. Well, it's just the way it is. It's always going to be. It's always going to be. And none of that's, none of that's the truth. The enemy is talking you out of freedom. The enemy is talking you out of complete liberty when we've been called to liberty. When we've been called to liberty. But listen to what Jesus says. He says, so you'll speak to it. And listen, listen to what he says. He goes on, he says, and it will be thrown into the sea. It will be thrown into the sea. Come on. And I'm not trying to use a play on of words. Why? Because if you throw it into the field, we would be driving and be like, oh, there's that mountain that was thrown into the field. If we if we threw it threw it into the hauler, we'd be driving. I don't know if people even say hauler. We say hauler around here. If we threw it into the hauler, we'd be driving and say, oh, there's the mountain that got, that got thrown into the hauler and we'd still see it with this eye. And so Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. You throw that mountain into a place where you'll never even see it again, where it will never affect you again, where you will never even know it again, will never even tempt you again. You'll never even be sick again with the same kind of sickness that has plagued your body. You will never see it again because that thing is going into the sea. It's going into the ocean and it's going down. You're never going to see it or experience it ever again. Don't let the enemy ever talk you out of freedom when we've been called to liberty, when we've been called to truth that sets us free. Amen. And so I want to encourage you with that word. Don't sell short to what he's called us to. Don't let, don't sell short to the freedom that's in Christ Jesus. Don't let man's thinking, don't let natural thinking, don't let that philosophy stuff talk you out of the truth of Jesus Christ, that you are free in Jesus name. Lord, I bless whoever's watching this. God, I thank you for who they are. Father, I thank you that you see what they're facing today, Lord. And I just thank you, Father, for giving them wisdom, discernment, understanding, clarity. Right now, Father, I speak healing in every area of people's lives. I speak freedom right now in people's lives that's watching this, Lord. And Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for your fire coming and burning up everything that don't belong in us, Lord. Burning up all the wrong thinking, burning up all the wrong motives. Father, I just thank you for burning up all the sickness, all the things that's keeping us from complete liberty, Lord. I thank you for holy fire. Come and consume it right now, Lord. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I love you guys. Be blessed. This thing's in me. I'm sorry about my passion. I'm not sorry. It's the Lord. He's in me like fire. And uh, just let him burn. I love you guys. Be blessed.